I recognize your hand in this house. Thank you for we who were not a people, we who were not beloved, you have brought across the boundaries by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We ask that tonight you will cause our eyes to be open to behold those wondrous things that you have captured in your law. Beyond the hearing, we receive grace to embody that the quality of our lives may bring you grace, praise, and glory. We ask that it will please you, Lord, to instruct my lips that your word will come in similar fashion as it would have if Jesus himself was speaking to us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Let me welcome you once again tonight into the house. And we trust the Lord that as we journey a little bit further in our labors, your work with God will be further furnished with what is required not only to live righteously, but to also live victoriously in the name of Jesus. One of the things that God begins to do to a man as a sign of his pleasure towards that man is that he begins to bring your teachers very close to you. By extension, it means that one of the signs that you have become a candidate of divine favor is that you become wiser not by personal effort but because of the teaching ministry of those that God has assigned to you. What I mean is that the expression of folly and if you want foolishness as a result of the scarcity of accurate teaching ministry is a sign of disfavor from the Lord. In the last one year, I have recovered by mercy one of the teachers of the word of God in our nation and I've spoken so much about him. I have learned so much from my spiritual father, the Apostle Arome. And um, by mercy, we have seen walk into our spiritual family the most esteemed doctor, David Ogwell. I want to recommend his teachings. You will grow very fast. I want to greatly recommend his teachings. You will grow very fast. The balance, the maturity, the depth, not just of utterance, but of the practical demonstrations of the word of God in very holistic perspective. What I mean by that is his labors will not just see you grow spiritually. It will affect every area of your life from things that have to do with relating with other people to even your secular labors. It was in listening to him um, he began to speak on the subject of that's I think the title of the sermon was the seven laws of healing and miracles I think that's the title of the sermon but his emphasis was beyond the miraculous into the supernatural and I want us to start by engaging the first law the things I listen Two from him have been backtested by scriptures. I'm, I'm one of the Berean Christians. I'm Nigerian, but I'm Berean. What it means is that no matter how eloquently you speak, ah, joy is good to see you. But I've not seen this yet. So happy new year. 
one of the things that I have committed myself to is that no matter how eloquent your utterances are, I will go back into scriptures to check if you are right. My esteem for a minister does not take the utterances of that minister beyond the word of God. Is somebody with me? So, as I speak to you, you take your notes. When you get back home, it is wisdom for you to place what I say side by side scriptures. And if you find out that I sustain a perspective that is contrary to scriptures, I give you the permission to trash my doctrine. So I spend a lot of time looking into the Bible to make sure that I do not feed a generation something that will be toxic to them. So the first law, I call it the first law of supernatural encounters and manifestations and it's called the law of provocation. Somebody say the law of provocation. Now the concept of provocation has to do with the staring of personalities, the staring of gifts, the staring of anointings, and the staring of the potentials in spiritual environments. The knowledge that undergirds the operation of this law says to us that spiritual personalities and spiritual essences can be dormant. It means that God can be in a place because a man is not conscious to the presence of God, a man may not be able to maximize what is present. There are graces upon your life. So that's outside the person of God, I said on Sunday, that God is man's greatest gift. But God is a giving gift. How many of you remember that? So that there are things that God comes giving in the day that he appears as a gift. So whether it is for God or for the things that he gives, you are not here yet. Are you watching? Is there Champions League today? So yeah, yeah, maybe you are watching Premiership or something, but you are not here yet. You have patients you left in the hospital. I know it's it's been like one year since you have played like this. So find yourself. Find yourself. So that the presence of God, the presence of his gifts, the presence of his enablements, such as the anointing, the presence of his things that define a spiritual atmosphere may not occasion consciousness and as long as you are not conscious of what is available you cannot maximize it are you with me so what the law of provocation helps us to do is to stare who is available and what is available so that by consciousness we can now press to engage what is available to us two verses of scripture Let's look at Psalms chapter 100, verse 4. What's happening? Okay, I want him to pray. Ah, okay. The Bible says to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That's a provocation label. What we do in thanksgiving is to acknowledge the things that God has done, it also includes acknowledging the gift of the person of God. So that in case he has not provided for you, you can still appreciate him for being a provider. Is somebody with me? When it comes to provision, God is a providing provider. I'm making those seeming complex statements. What a providing provider means is that even if God does not provide, he's still a provider. 
However, it is not in his shape to exist and not become active. Hi. Okay, we don't used to do long workers prayer today. Maybe that's why. God is a savior. But the redemptive enterprise reveals to us that God is a saving savior. If God decides not to save anybody, he will still be a savior. Are you with me? In the home, you have fathers who do not father. Am I right? So in case your biological father did not take care of you, he is still a father. The problem is that he is not a fathering father. God is not just who he says he is. To validate who he says he is, he functions in that way. I hope you understand me now. So, there are people you call my teacher, my teacher, but he's never entered your class. He means his status is teacher, but he may not be a teaching teacher. Everything that God has been advertised to be, he also has the, the capacity to prove them by activity. Are you with me? So when we come into the subject of thanksgiving, there are two grounds upon which a man thanks God. We thank him for the gift of his existence and then we thank him for the gift of his activity. So that even if I have not perceived a degree of blessedness today, God is still a blessing. Thank him for being a blessing. What that creates in my heart is a dimension of hope. That because you still remain who you are, as a matter of time, you will visit me with a blessing. So the Bible encourages that we enter its gates with thanksgiving. That's a steering protocol. You call him his names. And when the names begin to occasion the reality, you appreciate him for the reality. The second instruction is to come into his courts. And that gives us the picture of a progression. The gates before the courts. Into the courts with what? With praise. Praise essentially is a statement of valuation. I have been able to place you on the particular pedestrian because of what I know that you are. And so it's to eulogize God, to speak words based on your perception of him. That's what the Bible calls praise. That's how we approach his courts. And then the Bible now brings us back into the act of thanksgiving. Somebody is asking, why do we go from thanksgiving to praise to thanksgiving? It's because you may be hindered by the consciousness of what he has not done and you may think because he has not done it then he is not it but when you come into praise praise gives you the privilege to isolate God from activity to speak of his person and once you arrive at the consciousness of his person it becomes easy for you to now thank him also for his person it means without praise the second aspect of our thanksgiving, which is thanking God for who he is, may not become tangible. Are you with me? Give thanks unto him and bless his name. So, these are all protocols of provocation. That's how God is stared. It's not just a God thing, it's a spirit thing. I was sharing somewhere, maybe here, that if you have a friend who comes to church but is still giving to tra the traditional religion, maybe he, he hails from a heritage of masquerade worshippers. The last time you tried to steer your friend onto disappearance, you found out that Peter, that's it. I hope there's no Peter in church this night. Is there any Peter? Okay. So he won't, not your own Peter. So, Let's, is, is there any Judas in church tonight? No Judas. Okay. So let's assume that Judas is your friend and he hails from a heritage of masquerade worshippers. 
Judas may not have the capacity for disappearance. But when he wears that ancient garment, he's still a man. I know they claim that they hail from heaven, but he's still a man. When a praise singer begins to administer certain utterances, what happens is that the spirits that are attached to that garment begin to experience what we call staring. They are walked, they are walked. And as they are walked, the stare, what the staring does is to give them greater consciousness. After a while, you may find out that Peter becomes invisible. Because with the staring of a spirit is the intensification of the possibilities of that spirit. So Peter can appear. And when you say, sorry, Judas. And when you say Judas, you find out that he's behind you. He becomes a disappearing masquerade because the spirit was provoked onto activity. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. In trying to establish a statement of truth, scripture encourages us that we should come into two or more witnesses. And um, one of the rules for doctrine is that if what you want to establish has no shadow in the Old Testament, it's likely that your persuasion is wrong. When we resume our teacher's class, there are many things about how to manage the word of God that we need to learn. So that when you are studying, maybe it's your time to preach, you find out a witness in the Old Testament and you cross into the New Testament because what God is emphasizing is actually the same. If not, the grounds for judgment will have been different. After this manner, therefore, praying, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You find out that when you set out with the Lord's Prayer, your first assignment, like I said when we were in the class of prayer, was is to locate the person of your answers. Our Father which art in heaven, and when you locate him, which is God, what you will do is to come into the engagement of this law of provocation, you begin to hallow him. It is to speak well of. In hallowing beyond speaking well of, it is to separate into a class of its own. So, when Daddy Gio comes, for example, he kneels down. I've heard young people say, be, 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 be. God knows that it's those things. You see, we understand spiritually that spirits are stared when you confirm by utterance what they know that they already are. And so that's what Daddy Gio does. So he kneels down behind the lectern. And he goes, you are greater than the greatest. That's the act of hallowing. As long as your God still operates reality within the sphere of other gods, you have not hallowed him. So you can praise God in the sphere of other gods. Just like Shongo answers by fire. You say you are the God that answers by fire. When you go beyond that general recognition, you are the God whose flame swallows every other flame. That's hallowing. And that's how prayer begins. You are mightier than the mightiest. You are wiser than the wisest. And if we congregate all of our wisdoms, we find out that it will be fully in the day you come to display your wisdom. If you go gradual and, oh Jesus, I'm even feeling, even me, I'm feeling the staring. Because when you begin to go gradually like that, God begins to rise within you. Understand that the God that you interact with has deposited himself in you in the shape of his spirit. Because Jesus' promise was, I will ask the Father that he might send you another helper that he might stay with you forever. So the, the, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the presence of God. So when we begin to carry out that act in Halloween, he doesn't come from heaven. He rises from within your spirit and then your body after a while begins to operate in an electrified form. That's what I'm feeling now. It's at that point that our interactions truly begin because heaven can be felt. That's how to feel. 
Don't, don't rush. So tonight you want to advance hallowing him. We want to advance hallowing him. We want to advance hallowing him so that we can maximize his personality. So that we can maximize his gifts. So that we can take greatest advantage of the anointing and the things that define this spiritual atmosphere can be optimized. You want to mount any posture that gives you comfort before him. And for the next 10 minutes, just speak a song. Just speak a song. And we want to begin to hallow his name. Find out in your spirit or in scriptures a revelation of God. And by the help of the Holy Ghost, we want to set him apart from the rest. Every God comes with the consciousness of provision. But there is no God in the day of need that shows up like our God. The Bible says that he is our refuge and our strength. An ever present help. The priest of Baal knew that Baal could bail them out. The problem was that Baal had the tendency to go on journeys. Baal had the ability, had the tendency to sleep. So they needed to raise their voice to wake him up. But of our God, the Bible says, He that keepeth Israel, neither slumbers nor sleep. <laughs> Thank you, sir. We exalt your name. You are higher than the highest. Oh, you are the most blessed. You are the most glorious. You outlive everyone. You were before time began. And you will be when time is summarized. You are the almighty. Yes, they are mighty men. They are mighty spirits. But in the realms of might, you are separated from them all. You are holy. Every other being functions with the capacity for multi consecrations. But you are consecrated to yourself. You serve your own purpose. You serve your own purpose. Everybody engaging this way. That's what will inspire you. I motebre se makaka pame montoka sambeli te kete baboria bata kava papa bakande saile kobabo santa kadianta da astome kopapande reveka sata anta dai daka kame pesate lika me kostone soito grasta kabai ane kope papranta bakemre konde oh. Sabe brike la tokobai atamba baki kamba be makakata e soi ne katebre skaba redi setia e komba ba la de kembe kombe sitaya oh so de kwa kwa kakata sebe be ve katepela li kantande se mataba yes you are in a class of your own you are called the sovereign god you reign by yourself. You do all things according to the counsel of your own will. You are God in heaven. Yet to dwell in our mortal bodies. All in the sea Peporia. Every Kalia Santa Taya. Your greatness captures extremes. And the Likrado Sate. You are the Father. You are also the Son. You are the lion, you are the lamp, you are the servant, but you are also the king. Oh, Emma Kokerata Bapoda, Sabe, Elna Scapele Scape Merate. All sufficiency, ever presence, all powerful, 
ikomo bakoli ya sabayato inshime kakebero kele netoa shanti de grastani mapombi kalifataka mite vanayata Agagaba bakada da pira sadia tata leka kami de brete kastamba orado katua tatai shande kamila kopo e kope biaskoma e babra somba kalatana ale kope bivina baya tata akuato e kate bebera kada shanda kaya shanda di kankoma azabes azabes eskopa be eskope bebera ko rente Tonight we thank you for who you are. Yes, Lord. We thank you for who you are. There are dimensions of your existence that we have not experienced, but we are grateful that you are all of that. We thank you for the things that you have done. Oh, you have overwhelmed us. Oh, for the hopeless. Unto the faithless, goodness unto the deprived, blessings unto the cursed, favor unto the disfavored. Ola maya kamebo, mandete ye mo mi borod. Asha maya makovale di atoba.
that the Bible was written, there's an echo, not comfortable. That the Bible was written in a language that you can understand does not gift you an advantage in understanding the communications of God. <clears throat> you must understand the protocols that unlock, that unlock. In the day that the book, the, seed, the, the, the parchment, the scroll was sealed, I speak of that parchment in the book of Revelations that was inscribed upon within and without. It was by this same law of provocation. John was perplexed. How will I proceed? What is therein is important, but it is sealed. And then that elder came with an utterance advancing John's consciousness in the stature of the Christ. Weep not. He comes first as the lion of the tribe of Judah. You will hear his roar. He is the root of Jesse. That's to establish his humanity. <laughs> he has prevailed. That's how we unlock. I'm showing you tonight one of the secrets of my Bible study. People ask me all the time, how do you study your Bible? I, I read like every other person. But I understand that no matter how much revelation I have brought out of here, it's a sealed book. This is what our fathers do. You go for maybe a healing and deliverance service in Dunamis. You find out that even though God's servant, the doctor, Pastor Paul Enetia, has something to say, he seemingly wastes your time in engaging God. He starts with his lips, then he goes to his saxophone, and then a time comes when the only tool of worship is his tears. You come to stage because you feel that you have prayed long and you want to unlock a dimension. No, no, no. There, there, are, there are principles. His gates are always approached in thanksgiving. His courts in praise. And then you keep giving thanks unto him and blessing his name. That's how we become strong. May God give us understanding. In the name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10, 37 to 38. I'll be attempting to do the concluding two parts of the subject, the saving faith.